Hello again, welcome back to the kitchen table. This is just going to be a brief um, video. It's in response to a, a request from somebody and, and it's not the only one I've had actually. Um, and it's for people who are thinking about making the switch from vision mode into NASA mode. Now, those of you who, um, who are regular viewers will know what my opinion is on that. My personal opinion is get 20 or more flights under your belt in vision mode, learn to fly the aircraft, sort of getting to the point where it's instinctive before you add any more layers of complication. But you're all big girls and boys and you're all, you know, big enough to make your own decisions on that and look after yourself. So if you want to go and know how to do that, go and research the pitfalls and the pluses and how to do it. However, for the people who've already at that stage, but I had a few people saying I'm a bit confused about the LED signals that are going to get because NASA mode will change those signals. Uh, and it's another thing that you, if you're, you know, having to work out switch positions and watch for different signals, it's maybe useful to have a look at, at what, what, what changes when you switch to NASA mode. So that's what I'm going to run through today. I've just propped the vision up here so that the battery doesn't grind into the floor and we can have a good look at the rear LEDs. Um, so, of course, the reason why it's different is that the original standalone DJI NASA controller is designed to be mounted to aircraft that don't have the luxury of our telemetry via our camera onto our smartphone, telling us things like how many satellites we're locked onto and all that good stuff. So these signals are more complicated because they're designed to give you a bit more information. So I'm going to fire it up. We'll go through a, a, boot, a boot sequence and we'll see what we can see. You'll notice I've got both my switches in the uppermost position which means that I'm in GPS mode and I don't have intelligent orientation control switched on. So let's, um, let's boot her up and see what happens. There's the boot sequence. And then we get these strange flashing sequences. So the NASA mode uses a two-stage indicator. The first one, which is the green flash, shows you which flight mode you're in. So at the moment it's green and then some red, which we'll discuss in a minute. If I flick it down to ATI mode, watch, yellow. So that's quite useful because at a glance in the sky, if it's close into you, you can tell that you're still in ATI mode. Flip it back up. Wait, oh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Flip it back up and it goes green, flash, flash, flash. The rapid flashing green that you just saw is the first time... Sorry, when you get that rapid flashing green, that's the first moment you should consider taking off. What it means is that the aircraft has kind of decided, it's, it's gone through its warm up and it kind of roughly knows where its home is. Or at least if it doesn't know where its home is, all of its um, internal workings are calibrated to sort of work out which way is up. In this case, it probably don't want to fly it at this angle, but that's what the rapid flashing means. I never take off until I've got that. Outside, when you get satellite lock, that means it's found a home position lock and is ready to, 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 to fly. So you've got green and then three reds. Now, the three red flashes, three reds means you have fewer than five satellites locked. Probably a bad idea to fly in that situation, although it is flyable, but it will only be in ATI mode because that's all it's got. Um, that's three red flashes. It will then drop to two red flashes, which means it's got five satellites locked and you're getting there, but probably still shouldn't go anywhere. One red flash means that you have six satellites locked and you should then get the rapid green, which means you've got a home lock because six is enough. And then when you've got more than six, you don't get any red. It will just go green, nothing else. Green, nothing else. And that means you've got more than six satellites. Obviously in ATI mode, yellow. Now the other option you've got, I'll put it back into GPS mode, is if you've elected to choose intelligent orientation control, Exactly the same principle applies, except when I switch it, for example, into course lock, we get a yellow green and then the LED and then the satellite indicators. So yellow green means I'm in an IOC mode and then three red flashes means I have fewer than five satellites locked. And that's how it works. I think a lot of people are getting a bit confused because the um, the LED pattern on the DJI wiki and so on doesn't quite get over the fact that it's a two step signal process. So that's what you're looking for is the one flash, which tells you the mode which is related to where these things are located. And then the the other flashes tell you the satellite status. If you've got a good satellite lock, all you'll see is green flash, nothing. Green flash, nothing, or yellow flash. Um, obviously, I'm not going to take the kitchen table outside to show you that, but I think you get the idea. So I hope that's helped. If that was one thing that was holding you back, 
hopefully that isn't anymore. But like I say to everybody, go and do your homework on Nazimoda, make sure it's right for you. Okay, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.